my name is John and I am a gap consultant here at EF Gap Year. Um, I'm actually, like I said, joined by three of our amazing alumni and uh, who are actually there interning with us this summer. And I'll introduce them all in just a bit, but I myself and also an uh, alum, I did a gap semester with EF a couple of years back. So I'm just super excited to be here uh, and be joined by all these great people. So like I said earlier, Today, we're really gonna be having a discussion with our alumni that centers around their stories from their own GAP experience. Uh, some tips from when they were playing their GAP, when they were on their GAP, and how it affected them uh, when their GAP was, was over. So um, just for some context for everyone here right now, we offer GAP programs, year, semester, short-term programs for anyone ages 18 to 22. So whether this means you are a student who just graduated high school and looked to take a gap uh, before you start college, or you are in college right now, or even if you've graduated college, we have programs really designed for that big bucket of people who, um, in which we try to help you all develop those real world skills, um, make those lifelong memories, and just return home a better version of yourself, more adaptable, more um, ready to take on whatever could be next. So. I want to give a bit um, of a background on who we are here at EF um, and what our programs are all about. So to begin, EF. EF stands for Education First. I get that question a bunch of times, so I'd like to uh, clarify that in the very beginning. And we are the world leader in educational travel. We've been doing this for about 60 years now where we've helped millions of people travel, see new places, experience new cultures, learn new languages, all the while learning new things about the world and about themselves. So we're also an educational partner. We partner with thousands of high schools and colleges in the US. So many of you may know us because we actually work with your high school, or maybe you saw some ads for uh, EF Tours, uh, EF Ultimate Break, or EF Explore America. We're really big and really diverse. So. We are actually what we like to call globally local. And this just means that we have over 50,000 EF staff located all around the world, actually in 114 countries all around the world. So this just means that regardless of um, what's going on in the world, we essentially know what, what's happening on the ground because we ourselves live and work in these places. And what's really great about this is that it allows us to literally be there for our customers we are, we have offices and people uh, everywhere we travel. So we can just be there for our students in ways that many other uh, GAP providers just can't. And so when it comes to EF Gap Year, our programs, what they're really designed to do are, is to help students thrive in today's ever changing world. And so, like I said earlier, you'll be hearing firsthand about how these students were impacted by our own programs and how having the space and the tools and the experiences, most importantly, the confidence to just take on this world. So I'll let you, we'll talk about what kind of programs our students um, are doing, but I'll get into a bit about how our program itself works and how everything's structured. So I'll start with the three different lengths of program options. We have our short-term programs, which are four weeks long, our semester long programs and our gap year program, which is 25 weeks long. And so I'll just tease a little bit of these programs here tonight so that we can spend the majority of the time with our alumni. But if you wanna really get into the deep details of what these programs look like and ask more logistical questions about that, I recommend either joining us tomorrow for our info session that's happening at 7 p.m. Eastern, so just an hour earlier in this alumni panel, or another good option is to actually speak with your GAP consultant. And your GAP consultant, maybe the, they are um, reaching out to you already, maybe they've emailed you or texted you or invited you to come here, or if not, they definitely will be following up after this uh, alumni panel here tonight. So regardless, you have two pretty cool options to learn a little bit more about our GAP programs. So I want you all to keep in mind that regardless of which EF GAP program, the semester, the short term, the year, here's what's included. All of those round trip international flights, 
all of the activities and excursions that are built in the itinerary, all accommodations, most meals, as well as our 24 seven EF global support and our mentorship as well. And so when I say that 27 support and the mentorship, what I really mean is from this moment right now, all the way through to when you're actually out on the road and when you come back, you're going to be having a whole team of really amazing people surrounded you at all times. And so you of course have your cohort of people that you travel with. And this ranges per program, but you can expect anywhere from around 25 to 30, uh, give or take students to be with you at all times as you travel and navigate during your gap. So these people, um, all of the alumni here can attest to how great these people are. You really create such lifelong memories and bonds that live long after the program itself dies. So on top of that, you also have your tour directors and local guides. And so these are the really um, on the ground experts who help lead the cohort during their gap. And they help to give that expertise and give the insider perspective uh, on every leg of the gap program. So on top of that, you also have the EF gap advisor. And so every student is actually paired with a one-on-one -on -one program advisor who acts as that mentor, acts as that emergency contact to kind of communicate what is going on on the ground and uh, loop in your family back home. And they really are act as your main support person from the time you enroll to the time you touch down back home. And they're definitely available uh, and there for you 24 seven. And lastly, we also have the student life coordinators as you can see on the right. And I always like to compare the student life coordinator almost to the role and RA would play in a college dorm. How an RA helps to work with those interpersonal issues that go um, on at a dorm room. The student life coordinator acts the same way, however, on program with the students as they navigate. So a nice kind of robust support system that the students can have um, while they're on their GAP program. And so um, our short-term GAP programs, again, are four, four weeks long and have various departure dates, as you can see in the bottom left, which is really great because you can fit it at any point throughout the year. You maybe can uh, take it without having to take any time off from school in the summer, or you can do it for four weeks in the fall and the spring. And so here are three examples of our short-term programs that we're running. The European Discovery on the left goes through um, a bunch of different European countries and cities within four weeks, and is a really great way to be culturally immersed um, in Europe. The Sustainable Development in Costa Rica, again, is a four week long program that takes place in Costa Rica, this time focused on a little bit more uh, on sustainability and with some environmental conservation and, and really working with the community. And then in the bottom right, we have our global business program in London, which has more of an educational component where you study the basics of business by professionals across many different industries at our own international business school, Holt University. And again, I'm going through, through this pretty quickly. Um, tomorrow, again, is a more in-depth info session that will take, um, that will kind of break down these programs in more depth. I also talk about the semester programs, which are 10 weeks long, and these are built around the academic semester. So these semester programs depart in the fall and in the spring, in September and January. So we see a lot of students who join these programs who are maybe deferring a semester from school. Maybe they actually graduated early um, or got admitted for the spring semester. So they have a little bit of a break that they wanna take before, during, or after their college experience. And so these programs are actually one of our most popular and fastest growing programs. This is the program I actually did. So maybe I'm a little biased towards that, but we have five really amazing packages that you yourself can choose to explore and give yourself the opportunity um, in different parts of the world. And so these are the five semester offerings. And again, these semesters allow you to kind of get a lot of that cultural immersion. You are um, with a varying level of independence and structure. And again, I won't go through each one of these itineraries. If you want to um, follow along a little bit, you can actually check them out on our website, efgapyear.com. 
uh, or attend the webinar tomorrow, or again, speak with your GAP consultant. And again, this is our 25 week gap year program. And so how the gap year program works is it's actually two semesters long. There's a fall semester, then we send all the students back home for a winter break, and then a spring semester. So one long year that actually, as you can see in the slide here, goes through all these different pieces. That orientation, you do a little bit of a tour um, then in Europe, then you focus on a country you want to spend and study learning a new language and immerse yourself in the culture. You then have a piece on service and sustainability. Then you do another tour in Australia and New Zealand, followed up with an eight week long internship in Stockholm before we wrap everything back up um, at, our, at our Ashridge house in a little bit outside of London. So those are all of our programs. And again, I know I kind of rushed through them a little bit, but I want to really get our alumni here so we can start talking about um, their experiences. And one last thing I wanted to let you all know is you are able to earn you are able to earn college credit on all of our programs. So regardless of which program, the short term, the semester or the year, there is college credit that is available for you to earn. You can opt into it or you don't need to take the college credit. So that's pretty a neat piece that you can take alongside your own GAP program. And so Hopefully you all um, are feeling a little bit inspired and energized about the programs that I quickly broke down. Again, there is a lot for us to discuss regarding finances and logistics that you all can do with your GAP consultant, or again, uh, join us tomorrow for a more deeper dive into these logistics. So with that said, I'd like to welcome our alumni here, Kate, Foster, and Lily. You guys can come uh, on camera. And so these are our three amazing alumni here joining us today. Um, I'll start with Kate because she's on the left. Kate, can you just introduce yourself very quickly for us? Tell us which program you did and a little bit of a rundown about your program. Yeah, hi guys. So I did the gap year program for the full year in 2021 to 22. I did my guided exploration in Europe and then we did, um, or I did my language and culture in Malaga and then service and sustainability in Costa Rica, which you'll hear more about from Lily because she did a similar program. Um, and then I actually did my guided exploration instead of Australia and New Zealand in Ecuador and the Galapagos because it was COVID times and we couldn't get to Australia. So EF is actually, that was super a smooth transition. They're really good at figuring anything out when there's a crisis. Um, so yes, but then I did my business and internship in Dublin, which I believe um, all of the internships there now are in Stockholm, but I had a great time there, learned so much. And yeah, I'm excited to talk to you all about it. Amazing, Kate, thank you. Foster, you're next, buddy. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Give me a rundown of the program you chose and, and, and where you were traveling. Yeah, definitely. Um, first of all, hi, everyone. Um, it's awesome to see you all uh, out here on this Zoom getting excited about this. Um, so I did my I did a semester program back in the spring of 2020, which actually was it was the COVID year. It was right before before COVID hit. Um, so I started like Kate. I started with a two week guided exploration in Europe, hitting a lot of the major major cities and landmarks there. Um, and then I chose to study um, German in uh, Berlin, um, really get immersed in the language and culture. And then I, I rounded out my, my semester in Thailand doing um, service and sustainability work. I love it. Thank you, Foster. All right, Lily, you're up. Give me a little introduction on um, the program you chose and uh, a little bit about your program. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so good to see everybody here. My name is Lily. Um, so I actually did the short term Costa Rica program last summer uh, in July, and we went to five different areas of Costa Rica and volunteered with um, five different nonprofits, which was super awesome and really such a rewarding experience. Um, I can't recommend it more. And it was awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Lily. Love to hear that. All right. So for everyone here today in the audience, um, if you can take a mental image or maybe a physical image of this picture, just so you guys can know where our um, alumni have traveled, because I want to keep this engaging and dynamic. So feel free to uh, drop questions in the chat that you want to ask for our alumni. Um, ask for me, you know, I know we're, we'd all be super thrilled to kind of help you guys. So with that, I'll stop sharing. I'll give it three seconds for you guys to take a mental snapshot of this. Snapshot over. All right, here we are. Lily, 
Foster Kate. So what I want to do, which I think could be helpful for the audience here, is to just orient ourselves a little bit. So um, Kate, maybe we'll start with you. Can we just go back in time a little bit? Back before you knew you want, or maybe right when you had an idea of maybe a gap program is for me. Tell me what was going in your head at that moment and kind of what drew you to taking a gap program. My answer is I apologize if I recall. Um, but I knew that I wanted to take one it was right after my junior year and or during my junior year, I think I just applied to colleges, um, but I knew that I needed something at senior year. This was before COVID. I think we may be losing Kate a little bit. I know. Okay. I think we lost her a lot of bit. Um, she said that she had, was having some Wi-Fi issues, so hopefully she can join us back. But Foster, I'll let you pick up where she was going, and I'm going to throw that question back at you um, and give you a quick jogger. If you could tell me a little bit pre-GAP where your mind was at and why and how a GAP program kind of uh, – how you started thinking about that. Yeah, definitely. Um... So just to pick up um, where Kate kind of left off, I was in a similar position. Um, I kind of knew, I knew this was something I wanted to do pretty early, um, even, at, even at the end of my junior year of high school, really. Um, so I, I kind of felt a little stagnant. I've, I've always, um, I grew up in a small town. I went to a, a small school and I wanted to kind of push my own boundaries and kind of gain a more global perspective and um, challenge myself in a more international context. Um, so that really pushed me to, really motivated me to look into gap year options. Um, and, I, and I stumbled upon upon EF and I just really was drawn to the, the different level of options with language and service and the, the potential to do an internship. Um, so that really, really, I knew that was something I wanted to do for a while. And then it was just filling in the missing pieces of where I wanted to go and specifically my goals for, for each program. Amazing. Yeah, th thank you. I appreciate that that context. I think that's super helpful for us to just know a little bit of your world before diving into this. And Lily, I want to throw this into you because your program was pretty unique in the sense where it was really focused on one main theme. So I'd be curious to hear your take on this question of how this kind of, how you were drew to this, drawn to this program and what were the important factors leading up to it? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually, I just graduated college um, in May. So last year, I was just finishing up my junior year at the University of Hawaii, and I knew that I wanted to do my capstone project in the summer. So originally, I actually was going to do a study abroad program through my school, and that didn't work out. And so I was like madly trying to find other options um, and came across EF Gap. And I had taken EF trips in high school. Um, so I just figured like, let's check out the website and see what they have to offer. And it turns out they offered like the most amazing sustainable development program in Costa Rica that aligned perfectly with my interests and what I was studying in school. Um, and I really wanted to kind of get that, that feel for volunteering and helping people and helping the environment. And so I figured that this was like the perfect option for me. And it really turned out that it was. Um, and it actually worked out perfectly because I was able to get credit through my own school um, while going on this trip. And so I ended up doing my entire capstone um, on sustainable development in Costa Rica and how we can use those technologies to apply back to the US and Hawaii. Wow, Lily, that's so incredible. I think something I wanna ask you um, on top of that is, how, did you do anything similar? Like, how did you know this kind of Costa Rica program was something right for you? Um, were you nervous at all kind of joining into it or what was that like? Yeah, I definitely felt nervous um, jumping into it just because I didn't know anybody on the trip. And I, and I know that a lot of um, gappers like share that feeling when they're going, they're like, oh, I don't know, you know, if I'm going to make friends, but you always do. Um, and so I think, yeah, I was a little bit nervous about that and also figuring out how to like balance school while I was there um, and still keeping up with everything that I wanted to do for my capstone. Um, but I honestly think that once I was there, even the first day, all my worries kind of washed away because everybody was in the same position and really just wanted to get to know everybody else on the trip. So it worked out really well. I love to hear that. Um, Foster, I guess I wanna ask you a similar question 
Uh, I know you said you came from a small town and, um, you know, I, I envisioned small town and then a program like this. And those two things, I, I think for the normal person doesn't really kind of make, uh, you, you don't really see that linear flow. Tell me about that. Was that difficult at all making that transition? Yeah, it was interesting. And I'm sure uh, maybe some of you watching are in a, in a similar position where you're maybe go to a smaller high school, um, kind of been, been in a smaller town um, your whole life. Um, so there definitely was a lot of nerves going into it and some, some apprehension just on like, I'm going to a big city where I don't necessarily know the language. Um, how am I going to navigate that? How am I going to make friends? Um, but really, like Lily said, um, you get out there and it really starts to click. Um, so you'll, you'll kind of start to form connections during orientation with the, the people that you're going to be traveling with. Um, but then as soon as you get on the ground, um, for me, there was, there was maybe a few days where it was like, whoa, this is real. This is happening. I'm in a different city that I've never been in and I don't speak the language. Um, but then really, really past those, those first few days, um, you really get into a groove and it starts to click and you start meeting people and you're doing all these cool activities that you're, that you're getting really excited about. Um, so I, I would just really like to emphasize that while there may be that initial kind of trepidation going into it, it all does click very quickly. Totally. And I get that. And not to put your small town um, on the hot seat here, because, you know, again, I came from New York City and um, I did also did a sem semester program. But I think we all experienced that same nerves and maybe culture shock is a good way to put it because it's an environment so different. To your own so whatever nerves are naturally going to exist there kind of show itself and kate i think i'll let you kind of take back where we lost you if things um are all right and maybe if you, if you can repeat to everyone here about why a gap was on your mind and what led you to that decision a little bit yeah sorry about that guys um i knew pretty early on that it was something that I needed to do for myself. And I didn't really know how to go about that. I'm not from a traveling kind of family. Um, we're all very kind of sport related and like very academics and sports and that's it. And I just didn't really feel fulfilled by um, having those be my only commitments. And so I started looking into my um, interests in travel and in sustainability and in all of that good stuff um, and just learning about the world around me. And so I, Googled, you know, gap year programs, found EF right away, read through the entire website, and then just immediately called one of the consultants and was like, I want to do your program. And then a few weeks later, like once I had talked to a bunch of people at the company, I finally told my parents um, and I gave them such a good pitch. They couldn't say no. So um, yeah, but I, I definitely did my research, but it was also a pretty quick, uh, confident decision as well. Um, yes. And then I, I'm not sure totally what you guys just covered, but on the initial trepida trepidation point, um, it's also so helpful to be within a cohort because when you are with um, people that are like, like-minded with you and you're doing um, some of these things that's like kind of sound scary um, before you do them, they end up not being scary at all. Some things are actually funny because they're doing the, it's happening with people. So like, I know a guy that lost all of his luggage that was totally his fault. He completely could have avoided that. But um, he, it was not a big deal. Like he didn't stress out. Everyone was with him and we were all just like, man, do you want a shirt? Like it was just, it was very, just, you know, it worked. And so, and I think a lot of that is because of each other. Sorry, that's my dog barking. So I'm going to go back on mute, but yeah. No, perfect. Thank you, Kate. I appreciate that. Um, okay, good. I think this is helpful just to kind of see where we were all at. And obviously we, you all had kind of different, goals or reasons that led you to take a gap program, but you all um, did it and can relate on similar themes uh, throughout all of that. So I think I want to touch a little bit more on when you now are, are on program in the beginning times, um, you had your goals, you knew what you wanted to get out of a gap program. And I want to add, maybe I'll start with Lily, because maybe this is um, most clear in terms of the service that you were looking to get out of the program in Costa Rica. Were there other things that kind of was guiding you along that journey as well? Meaning other goals or interests you like kept with yourself that you wanted to get out of this program? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me was honestly taking risks. I'm not a huge risk taker and I like it really made me uncomfortable before I went to Costa Rica. And so I think that was like the biggest 
thing that I wanted to get out of it was just kind of to like get outside my comfort zone and do those things like zip lining and white water rafting that I've never done before and just like try it and see if I liked it. Spoiler alert, I loved it. Um, and so I think that that was like one of the biggest goals for me was just to get outside my comfort zone and meet new people and also be in a space and community where I felt like we were all working towards the same shared goal. So I think that doing the service work really brought us closer together as a cohort, but it also made it just way clearer for me in terms of what I want to do and what I want to get out of, not just like my college experience at the time, but also my life moving forward. Um, so I think that that was the biggest thing for me was just to really get out there and take risks and get outside of my comfort zone um, and meet new people. And all of that was achieved. So, yeah. Great. Awesome, Lily. Um, Foster, I want to kind of throw a similar question your way because I myself did a program um, similar in structure to to yours. And so you having a pretty dynamic gap semester, you know, doing a little bit of the language, the guided exploration, the service, did it, was it clear kind of the goals that were present all the way throughout it? Or did the goals that you had change on different parts of the trip? Yeah, that's, I actually really like that question. Now. That's an interesting one because I came into the program with a few goals that I'd set personally for myself that I wanted to achieve throughout the program. Um, so I knew going into it, I wanted to achieve, this is a more tangible goal, but I wanted to achieve a base level of, of German language knowledge to where I could communicate with people within the country. Um, so that was more, more tangible, more um, results oriented goal even. Um, but I had a few, few other goals and that, that involved meeting new people. I really wanted to form strong connections with both the people in my homestay, um, people in my school and the people in my cohort. So that was really something I challenged myself to get outside of my comfort zone and, and really try to introduce myself to as many people as I could. Um, and then through that, I had the, the goal of just developing better communication skills and more confidence and independence along the way. So I kind of I kind of came into the program with with those set goals in mind. But to your question, I think each different module offers the opportunity for new goals to kind of come about and um, new directions where you can kind of go. Um, so, for example, in Thailand, we were we were with a smaller cohort. So I really, really honed in on the goal of meeting new people and forming connections. And I really got to know the the people we worked with. We worked at an elephant um, sanctuary, rehabilitating elephants, um, which is awesome. And yeah, I could talk about that forever. Um, but I really made it my goal to talk about talk to the specific director um, and just kind of touch on their life story and why they do what they did. Um, so I think in each different module, you'll find a lot of goals just kind of pop up that you weren't necessarily aware of. Um, and these are things that are really going to help you help you uh, move along the modules. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. And I think that's also like a bigger metaphor for life too, because again, I mean, this is a pretty nice, nicely structured, clean itinerary where you know kind of what's going on, but externally or internally rather, there are different things, different goals, different aspirations that can come along. Um, and I definitely felt that when I was on my gap semester program with EF on maybe goals I didn't even realize I had or things that I saw myself wanting to achieve um, and versions of myself that I wanted to become. So I also am super curious to hear Kate's take on this question too, because Kate, you had such a, a really interesting uh, program that included all these pieces. So maybe can you walk me through what, grounded you throughout such a dynamic gap program? Yeah, so I think it was definitely, as everyone has said, like meeting new friends and those really deep bonds that you create with them on a program like this um, was definitely one of my goals. It's, I always say like, I came out of it absolutely shocked that like you could be that close with that many people because I was, um, able to switch up my group so many times and like yeah it was kind of hard I was especially going from like my first module to my next one I was like it's I don't have most of my people here and then those people are actually now like probably going to be my bridal party like they're my favorite people ever um I did want to highlight uh one of their stories she um just to talk about sort of 
how you can um, pursue your interests um, sort of like outside of just like your goals on program, like your interests that you had beforehand. So she was a songwriter and she'd been working on this one and I'd heard her play it on a guitar in Spain and I'd heard her play it on a piano in Ecuador. Um, and then when she was in Berlin for her internship, she met a producer at an open mic and she just like went after the Leadership Academy and went and shared like just produce this song it's on apple music now like i can put it in a chat but it's yeah that's a really cool story that i like sharing too so definitely possible to like achieve all of your goals and all of these kind of like abstract ideas of growth that you want um as it pertains to the program but there's also so much free time where you get to really like yeah hone in on your own interests as well in a new place I really like that. And I think you definitely need to drop that song in the chat so we can boost those streams up a little bit for, for, for her. Um, all right, great. So this is all really interesting stuff. And I love hearing all of your takes on these questions. I think what really stands out to me is you guys kept mentioning the cohort, the cohort. And I, again, I know how much I loved my own uh, cohort and the, the dynamics of my own group and uh, the quirks of my tour director and all these things that really stand out and uh, almost ways that, you know, the the itinerary can't. Um, maybe Foster, I'll start with you. Can you speak about what uh, maybe the impactful moments between you and your cohort and where those, um, you know, kind of where that fell between the lines of the activities and excursions? Yeah, definitely. Um just to start off, I had an incredible experience with the cohort and with cohort travel. I like to say it was like my built-in family and built-in support system. Um, so whenever there's a challenge, we're all working on it together and we all have each other's back. And I think that's that's one of the beauties of traveling in a group like that. Um, but yeah, so as to go back to your question, John, I think um, so we have certain activities that we all do as a group, um, and these are going to be really cool, really fun, um, engaging activities. And then there will be free time. Um, and so as a group, we kind of decided there were a lot of free times where there were a lot of people who were interested in, in sports or in kind of exploring different museums and, and art exhibits and things like that. Um, so we would try, and I did, I'm really into uh, sports and soccer, uh, especially. So we would always get a group and we would go to maybe a local soccer field and we would just spend two hours there on a free afternoon just just playing soccer with some of the some of the local people. Um, and that that's also a great way to just immerse yourself in a different language and really learn about the people there. Um, so that was that was incredible. That was one of my highlights um, and kind of fits in between the lines of a planned program activity. Um, but we also, a lot of the cohort, we would take the opportunity to all go as a group to a, to a certain museum or something that, that stood out to, to a few of us that wasn't necessarily in the itinerary already. Um, so I think it's really important to take advantage of that group and do things that um, a lot of the people are in the group are interested in um, and just make that just a big, fun group activity. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. And I love hearing about uh, all those different dynamics and, and really engaging with kind of local communities. I think that really makes for such an impactful GAP program. Lily, can you take that question on too, in terms of like, what did free time look like with you and your cohort on, you know, there is a lot of independence, but there is also a lot of structure. So how did you kind of um, find a middle ground with that? Yeah, so on the short-term programs, it works a little bit differently because you're with your tour director um, and your cohort the entire time. So when you are doing service learning projects, you'll be with them for the whole day. And then often you'll have like the mornings free to yourself and then also the afternoons past like 4 p.m. Um, so that really gave us a good opportunity to hang out after we were done for the day and could shower off all our stink um, from sweating. So it was nice so we that we could um, like be together. So we would often like eat dinner together and then we would have time where we could just chill or play card games together and then um, go out for the night or we would stay home and just play games, um, which was super awesome. And then another thing that we did in my cohort was also play volleyball. So we had this volleyball that we had with us the entire time. Um, and that was another activity that we liked to do um, after we were done for the day and just chilling with each other, which was super awesome. And 
it came to the point so much where we would play volleyball every single day that we actually ended up signing the volleyball and writing some really sweet notes to our tour director and gave it to him um, at the end of the trip, uh, which was very, very heartwarming and sweet. So for the short term program, and especially in Costa Rica, I would say there's a little bit less free time than you would normally get on a semester or year program, but it's still worked in there and you still do have time to yourself. Um, or if you want to hang out with the group outside of your service learning projects as well. So it's really up to you to decide how to spend your time, um, other than when you're doing the service learning projects, but we definitely found a way to integrate um, and play games and have like a great time together. So. So on that note, Lily, in terms of the um, service short-term program being a little bit more dynamic and less free time, I'm sure at times that must have gotten tiring or exhausting. Or what I'm trying to get at is how were you able to kind of build in time for yourself or you know things to kind of unwind a little bit, maybe separate yourself from the cohort? What did that look like for you? Yeah, I definitely think it it got a little bit overstimulating at times just being with everybody constantly. So um, if you're ever feeling like you need a moment to yourself or maybe you want to take the morning off from a service learning activity, um, you can always talk to your tour director and they will be very um, flexible with you in terms of what you need for yourself. And so there were definitely a few moments like that. And even in free time where I would just be like, I need to have some time alone. Um, and it worked out really well for me because I was just able to journal and kind of get down my thoughts and and kind of get them an agenda for what I did that day. And I'm so glad that I did that because now I can look back and like see what I did each day in Costa Rica. And it's kind of really sweet and gives me a lot of nostalgia from that time. So um, I would definitely recommend that. Just rem remember to take care of yourself. And uh, if you need some time alone, that's totally fine. And I think that having setting a time to journal and kind of be by yourself is only going to help you in the long run. Lily, I totally agree with that. I, I for one, always kind of, um, you know, taking photos, I think is so important to just navigate, uh, or, you know, document your trip. But I think journaling also uh, gives some context behind those photos that maybe don't speak for itself. Um, so I really like that. And I love that answer. And Kate, I want to bring this to you because again, you have, you are probably in much different worlds at every uh, point and, and every different module, different leg of this experience. Were there certain times where you, um, you know, like, how did you utilize free time that looked differently in each of these places? Did, were things constant? Were things planned? Like, how did that look? Some things were definitely constant. Um, a big thing for us was like, and it was a part of kind of when we needed to rest. Um, this would especially happen after like an especially um, sort of physically intensive um, day at uh, service in Costa. Um, but we would have movie nights and we would, I mean, pile people onto these beds and we would all snuggle together. And it was all super cute, just kind of like cuddling and watching movies. And like, it would be this tiny screen across this whole giant room in this like hotel room. Um, and so that was a really fun thing that kind of followed me everywhere, but um, definitely similar um, planning that happened every single day in different places. So like in Spain, after school, um, after classes got out, we would either talk about, are you guys free right now? No, do you need to go rest? Okay, do you wanna go meet me at four? Like just definitely constantly making plans for that day and for the next day and with everyone at school. And then in Costa Rica, it was like Lily said, it was, you know, volleyball or soccer in a beach or a field or whatever. Um, or if you had, if you were in the middle of the jungle with no service, we played some chess. Um, we got really into like, we made up some games at one point because we were like, we're done with chess. Um, but we had the greatest time the whole time. So, and it wasn't about what we were doing. It was more just, you know, laughing together. So, uh, yeah. And then Dublin was more, um, there was just so much to do when you're in this huge city. Um, and so we would go to museums all the time. And after work, I would, you know, go out for drinks with, a friend and her coworker or whatever it was. And um, yeah, it was, Dublin was very kind of fast paced, but I lived a very slow paced life because I was kind of everywhere all at once, but I wasn't doing much. It was kind of, I was just strolling. So it was nice. Um, and yeah, finding some peace in the storm is always, is always great. So um, yeah, I would say some, some things stay consistent over kind of how you spend your free time. But yeah, a lot of that consistency is just, you know, being around the people that you're connecting with. So yeah. I think that's so cool. And I guess, Kate, on top of that too, how did your tour director fit into 
to this world as well. I know you were speaking on your cohort, but was the tour director kind of impactful in any of those moments? Mm -hmm. So back in my day, um, we didn't really have tour directors on the language or the internship modules, but um, in Costa Rica, my tour director, Eric, he was, I mean, he's uncle Eric to me now. So like he's, I still talk to him. We send each other holiday like texts. Like he actually helped me write a paper for my anthropology class uh, first semester of college. Um, yeah, we, we keep up. He definitely like I met his family. I met his daughter. I got to meet his um, his nephew. And like we went to uh, this one hotel and his nephew, like we got the channel on that he was playing basketball on for a Costa Rican team. And we were like cheering on this dude on the TV that we had just met. And it was so cool. Um, yeah, but they like they definitely they make you feel like you're at home for sure. It's cool. Yeah, I think that's I think all of this is super um, informative and um I think really important stuff to share with you know the audience here today because these are things that you won't find on the website. These are stories that aren't built into the itinerary, but maybe are a little bit more impactful than some of the things that uh, you know you see and you see behind the lines a little bit, a little, a little bit of a peek behind the curtain. Um, and I guess on that note, um, Lily, I know you said you had a little bit of a smaller group. Can you walk me through what? The relationship was like with that cohort how you guys bonded and uh, maybe how they impacted you and how they affected your trip yeah i think having so my cohort of people was only 12 people all together and then 13 with our tour director so it was a little bit crazy because it there was it was like impossible for us not to get close because it was such a small amount of people um so really like when we were hanging out it wasn't really that we were hanging out like two of us in one area and three of us in one area like we were all together all the time um so i think that definitely impacted the way that we were able to get close but it also impacted our ability to work together on the service trip so i think because of the fact that we were so close it really made us it made it way better for us to communicate with each other when we were doing um the service work and also just communicating when we needed a break or when we were okay to like hang out so i think that that was a really big thing for our group specifically and then I also think one of the main reasons that our tour group got so close was because of our tour director Ryan and I had a pretty similar experience to Kate where Ryan just kind of became like all of our dad like he 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 just wanted to like be with us the entire time you could ask him any question under the sun and he would be more than happy to answer um and he also just made us feel like very safe and connected and also gave us the flexibility to like take a little bit of time off if we were sick or if we were feeling badly or you know any of those things he was very understanding um and I think that definitely brought our cohort of people together um even closer because of his impact and his openness and just ability to kind of talk with us so I really appreciated him and, and kind of same thing with Kate like we still text in our group chat and it's actually oh, the one year anniversary right now of when we were there last year so I'm getting all of these texts all these memories that we're sending in our group chat um from pictures and things that we were doing last this time last year so it's really special a really special opportunity um and i think yeah being with a cohort really makes it even better and lily on that note like having those special relationships with the cohort in such a special place um and also that experience with the tour director who almost is acting as like a role model in, in certain senses did that like resonate after the program was over like uh, after the program ended what did that look like um and you know those emotions that you kept yeah, totally. I think, I think, well, when we were there, our last night that we were there, Ryan gave us like this huge speech and was like, you guys have changed my life. And like, it's been so nice to like be around you guys and all this. And he's like, I've learned so much from every one of you. And so I think that last day and after we gave him the volleyball, I think that really solidified it. He was like, okay, yeah, these are my people. Um, so we were able to just kind of keep in touch with him. We have this huge WhatsApp group chat. He was a reference on my application for this position as an alumni intern. So that's another thing. Um, and he, you know, he's just always good at like supporting from afar. And I think that goes for every single person in the group. And there were even uh, three people from my group actually 
went to visit um, Puerto Rico a couple of months back and he flew out there to meet with them. And so they were able to like hang out with him there too. So it's, it just really shows that like these relationships transcend the trip. Like it's not just going to stop after you leave. Um, so I think that's really special. Definitely. And I think, um, Foster, I, I want to tie you into this because we talked earlier about kind of the goals and the aspirations that you were having during the trip and how that could have affected your character. How did maybe, I want to put all those pieces, like um, your internal self, the, the experience with the cohort, with the tour director, any experience abroad, how did all of that impact you uh, as an individual after the program was over? Yeah, definitely. That's a great question. And I'd like to apologize firstly for the kind of grainy lighting. The lamp in my room actually is broken. So that's why it's a little, it's a little shadowy in here. Um, but John, back to your question. Yeah, I mean, it's I feel like the cohort and the whole travel experience was huge on just my just my personal development. Um, because I was I was getting all these like we were having just so many open, good conversations with everyone in the cohort. Um, and, and all the friends you meet abroad. So you kind of get all these different perspectives. And I really learned to look at things from a lens that's not um, like the small town feel that I'm used to. Um, but then as far as just, just the sense of confidence and communication independence, um, when I was in, in Germany, I did my homestay with, with, I had two roommates and none of us shared a common language. Um, so we were all trying to learn German. And um, I didn't speak either of their languages and they spoke limited English. Um, so this was a challenge in and of itself, trying to figure out how to communicate um, within like this, this roommate setting. Um, and I think that was actually one of the cooler experiences I had because we used a lot of body language or even Google Translate. And we would find these topics like, like soccer that we were all super passionate about. And we could have these really fun conversations without necessarily speaking a language we were used to so I think I think that just really taught me to be able to communicate and be open to communicate with all sorts of different people of all sorts of different um, backgrounds who have who have totally different experiences from you and you and you learn to see see the world in in just different perspectives and you really gain this this global appreciation um, through through the experiences that you have it's funny because I I think for a lot of people, it may be difficult to uh, understand different personality types. And so you having to be in a situation where you have to literally understand different languages to in, order, in order to communicate with different people, I bet that must have been a pretty neat experience, to say the least. And Yeah, Foster, it was definitely unique. And just to go off that, I feel like just having that as a challenge made the whole thing so much more meaningful. So when we were a few days in, a week in, two weeks in, and we had these connections, I felt like they were even more special than it would have been had we just all been able to to speak right off the bat. Totally. Yeah. You kind of built that with them, that, that experience. Right. Um, Foster, I think it'd be cool to know, what are you up to right now? What are you uh, studying? Like what's your world looking like right now? Yeah. So right now I'm going to my senior year at um, college down in, in Pennsylvania. I don't know if any of you guys are in that area, um, but right now I'm studying international affairs. And I, I like this question because I can say, I can really say that my gap year experience led me on the path that I, that I chose in college. Um, it really kind of laid the groundwork. Um, so I chose to major in international affairs because of the global experiences I had abroad. And just, I wanted to be able to, to facilitate that in a more, in an academic setting. Um, and so I used these, these global experiences and these global perspectives to kind of push myself into, into a major that, Hopefully I can end up working internationally um, or doing, doing service internationally and being able to, to help people around the world. Wow, that's super cool. Um, I'm excited to see uh, how things develop with, with you as well and, and your future career. Um, Kate, I wanna ask you, um, how did your GAP experience, um, like what did it literally look like after the, your program was over? Like, what are you studying now in college? What are you up to? What's your world looking like? Um, I am currently, I'm going to my sophomore year, well, sophomore year, junior year, kind of mixed bag, um, uh, at Colorado State University. Um, I'm actually, my primary major is, um, well, it's kind of, it's natural resource tourism with a global concentration. And then I'm also, I also have two kind of piggyback majors and one is, um, 
business administration one is Spanish uh, with a purpose. So it's like business Spanish. Um, so that's all kind of a mouthful. But what it means is I'm studying pretty much exactly what I did on the trip as well, kind of similar to Foster. Um, I, I definitely went on the trip sort of with the intention of figuring myself out. Um, and then not only did I like kind of realize I already knew who I was, um, but I felt like valid in it for the first time. And like um, it helped me like guide my decisions since then um based on who I who I was and and I also kind of realized like other people no one's really that different from me and so um yeah that that was a, a big thing for me afterwards was coming back and being able to talk to everybody on the same level with like a lot less anxiety um and I also just I know what I'm capable of now and people pick up on that for sure um even just talking with like a professor, for example, that I, I really admired and is really involved in a lot of different um, international travel conventions and all this stuff. Um, he remembered my name because I went up and talked to him the first day and like, yeah, stuff like that has been, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, has been really meaningful. And I, yeah, I really can't describe um, the difference from before versus, versus now. And uh, I was super successful in kind of creating um, I learned a lot about leadership. And so when I got to my, I went back to a dorm room for my freshman year of, of college, but um, I kind of made it my own responsibility to get us to all be kind of a family. So I like set up like Wednesday night dinners and like that turned into just me teaching everyone how to cook because they didn't know. Um, <laughs> but it was just so fun to kind of like bring the community aspect too of what I learned on the, on the gap year and bring that into my college experience as well. So, yeah. Foster and Kate, I want you guys both to kind of bounce this question amongst yourselves. What did the transition into college look like? Because again, you had experience that not many people entering college can say that they had. So was that difficult, like um, navigating that uh, post-gap life? I can start yeah. us off if you want, Kate. Yeah, or you can. <laughs> go ahead, actually. All right. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's interesting because, um, I mean, so I'm sorry, John, can you repeat the question? No, just the transition <laughs> into college, what that looked like, you know, versus the typical college freshman who doesn't have a, such a robust experience like this. What was that like, yeah. kind of, that transition? So, yeah, I think a lot of people, um, a lot of people think that taking a gap year, they they might even get behind on the college um, that their friends might experience. Um, and in my, in my experiences, that's the complete opposite. I feel like it prepared me so much more going into freshman year post COVID, um, I was just that much better able to, to create and maintain relationships with the other students. Um, and I was that much more confident talking in classes about certain issues that I, that I had even experienced abroad. Um, so I think I would even argue it set me up in the best possible way to create a fulfilling um, freshman year and beyond. Yeah, I would agree. I would say um, I even felt like under challenged once I got to college. I definitely like before my gap year, I was terrified for college, not in terms of like I didn't want to go, but I was super excited for it. But I was scared of the academic part. And even that was just like so it felt under challenging. And it, but that like wasn't a bad thing because it gave me an opportunity to like pursue other things that I'd been really interested in. Like I joined the ski club and like I started doing some more like adventures out into the wilderness, like by myself and with my friends. And um, it gave me more time to like foster my own like hobbies and stuff because school wasn't such an overwhelming like weight that was like stopping me from taking advantage of the time that I did have. Um, and yeah, I will say, I did feel, not to use like an annoying word, but I felt very infantilized a little bit going into a dorm and feeling supervised like beyond kind of what I was used to. And like, I, I could tell that no one really could tell that I was a year older and I had all of this experience and I like wasn't feeling very seen anymore for it, but I also didn't want to brag about it. Um, so I didn't talk about it that much, but then people started asking questions. And then when they heard about it, they just had more questions. And like, I think I've definitely, well, I know that I've convinced um, a good five to eight of my friends to travel while they're um, in college. And that's been really cool. But um, yeah, I definitely, it's it's hard because you don't feel seen at first because you know so much about yourself in the world and you just want to share it and you want everyone to get that experience. Um, 
but you're in a different environment. And so you kind of have to like, in like sit back inside of yourself a little bit and like realize like where you're at. Um, but yeah, I just felt so, it was so easy to make friends with upperclassmen and with my professors and with people in my study abroad office. And um, yeah, just, just talking to people and knowing who I was just like, it's so visible. So yeah. I, I, I love that. And I think um, something that you kind of brought out, I think that maturity in doing, um, the maturity that, that you receive in doing a program like this and, and seeing the world and and learning more about yourself. I think that confidence, having that confidence to do something that maybe is a little against the grain, like taking a gap, having the confidence to make a decision to do something like this that is uniquely yours. I think that maturity and that confidence speaks volumes um, to people that you are um, surrounded with. And I know we have a couple minutes left. Lily, I want to wrap this up with you. Um, can you just uh, speak a little bit on the impact of what this gap did in conjunction, kind of following it up with your college career and how that impacted you moving forward? Yeah, totally. Um, so, sorry about that motorcycle. Well, I don't know if you guys could hear that, um, but okay, good. Um, so with my experience, I, so I think the most impactful thing for me um, was, on the trip was probably going to the UN, the UN University for Peace at the end, um, which is how you kind of do your wrap up uh, before everybody is sent home. And so that experience really kind of motivated me to get more into um, the UN Association at my school. And so not only did I complete my capstone project in Costa Rica, that was like definitely a big thing for me um, for my political science degree, but also I ended up being the president of the United Nations Association Club at my college. And so I did an entire internship with them last semester, which was so cool and such an amazing opportunity for me, not only to network, but also to um, meet other people that are my age that are interested in the same things and also kind of build a community at my college. So I think that the experience in Costa Rica motivated me to do that in my career or in my college career, but it also brought me here to this position right now that I'm in, which I've had such a good time with. Um, and I I honestly think the experience in Costa Rica just made me realize like my true passion for service work and helping people and also traveling and exploring the world and experiencing different cultures and, and just finding ways to connect with people that you wouldn't on a regular basis. I think that's the biggest thing that I've taken from my trip. And I think that's something that I'll have with me forever now because I feel like I'm way more open to the possibility of meeting new people and also just experiencing different places. Lily, amazing, thank you. Um, and with that, we're right at time. I mean, that just kind of flew by. I know I could do this for another hour, no sweat, but don't wanna leave everyone here. I know everyone has things to attend to, but um, alumni, thank you all for joining us. I know this was um, super great just getting to learn a little bit more about um, all of you and your journeys. And I want to end it off for everyone here in the audience. If any of this sounds interesting and exciting and you want to learn more, um, definitely connect with that uh, gap year consultant who's been reaching out. Um, they'd be happy to set you up with speaking with each one of these alumni in more detail if you want to even uh, ask them specific questions about their experience. But with that said, I will conclude today's tonight's webinar and let everyone off, but thank you all for joining us and excited to see where your gap journeys uh, lie.